All right, so this is a review of a fight between Katsunari Takayama and Rico Kano for the vacant WBA World Minimum Weight Championship, 105 pounds. It took place in Hyogo, Japan. Um, and it, uh, it was really a, a solid fight. And Katsunari Takayama managed to pull through with a technical decision, a unanimous technical decision, after six rounds over Rico Kano. And now he is a six-time strawweight champion. Uh, well, I mean, six-time strawweight champion in terms of the a actual amount of titles he's won, but four-time strawweight champion in terms of um, being a champion at any given time. Basically, to explain that, he was a WBC champion, an, I an interim WBA champion. Uh, he Then he was an IBF champion. Then he uh, lost unification, but then he managed to reunify uh, both WBO and IBF. And then finally, now here, he re-won the WBO. But let me get to the fight real quick. Uh, Katsunari Takayama, he's always known as a very quick uh, fighter. Quick hands, quick feet. Um, a lot of people uh, would probably know him probably more, most famously from his fight. His uh, fight with um, Roman Gonzalez. That, you know, was one of uh, Roman Gonzalez's first early big wins. Probably one of his uh, first signature wins out there um, after he won his title against Yutaka Nida. Who incidentally was actually the man to initially defeat um, Takayama for his first title. But he managed to, to come through here against a young, a young fighter, 18-year-old uh, Riku Kano compared to uh, Takayama who's 33. And, um, you know, Kano's a little bit taller, a little bit rangier. Um, at first, it looked like he was having a, so had a good advantage. You know, he had a night. He was and he was using his reach advantage to his advantage. Um, he was, uh, you know, shooting, shooting the right hand, shooting the uh, left hand, uh, um, because it's a southpaw, shooting the left cross the, with the with the right jab. And Takayama found it troubling at first in order to close the distance. But the thing is, he's a very quick guy who's able to close distance on fighters very fast. And he did so pretty much by the end of the round. It was definitely a close round. Um, the first couple of rounds, I thought, were actually were, were fairly close. But in the second round especially, um, I thought that Takayama really started to get a good rhythm under himself. And um, start landing, you know, the, the, the right hand especially. But just the fact that he throws in combinations. You know, once he gets inside on a fighter, it can be really tough to keep Takayama off of you. Because he's just con throwing consistent combinations. Um, from all angles and he's just swarming you with punches you know it's, it's just a very high energy style high energy high pace style um, and you know I'll get to to why that's really brought him a lot of success in, in just a second um, Kano tried to of course recover in the third and the fourth he did make the rounds close but overall still um, Takayama was really landing the overall uh, more clean and effective work um, Kano would land a nice uh, like head snapping clear shot but then Takayama would immediately have an answer back with a combination usually. And a lot of the time, you know, just the body work, the head work, even though it wasn't necessarily the same kind of flashy high re highlight reel um, type of punches that he was landing on Kano, the fact that he was just landing so much more than Kano in comparison is really what made the difference. And it really made the difference throughout um, all six of the rounds. Of course, they wound up stopping it um, the, after six because of the fact that there was a really bad head clash in the fifth round that that brought out a lot of blood um, above Takayama's eye. They wound up uh, having to stop it, so they went to the scorecards, and Takayama was up on all the judges' scorecards, 59-56 on two and 58-56 on one, so it's essentially a 5-1 to one or 4-2 type fight. I'd really more agree with the 4-2 to two type of fight. Um, I did think that Kano did really well for himself, you know, being a guy that came into this fight 10-1-1. And, you know, relatively inexperienced, a young, relatively inexperienced fighter. You know, you don't really see too many pros that are able to get a world title shot at, you know, barely being in adulthood. So that was definitely something that he pulled off really well for himself, just the fact that he was able to get there. Um, but, yeah, Takayama is just uh, his veteran style, his quick style. He's, you know, he's a veteran, but he's a very athletic veteran, a very agile, uh, quick, you know, fast hands, fast feet, like I said. And, uh, yeah, this is now uh, six titles that he's won. And it's kind of funny, too, because he's actually managed to pull off winning a belt from every single organization. Uh, of course, his, his original title was a WBC world minimum weight title that he won off of Isaac Bustos way back in 2005, 11 years ago. Of course, uh, lost that to Igor Kiowa. 
um, won the interim WBA World t uh, Strawweight Belt against Carlos Melo in 2006. Wound up losing that to Yutaka Nida by a split decision. The, the Eagle Kiowa fight was by unanimous decision. Um, eventually came up and uh, challenged Roman Gonzalez for the WBA title that Nida had taken off of. Uh, Takayama and Gonzalez took off of Nida, but he wound up losing unanimous decision there to Gonzalez. Um, then fought uh, Nkotsanati Joyi of South Africa. Really good fighter, a guy that I really used to think highly of. Um, he's kind of disappeared off the scene by and large um, since the he, he lost a couple of fights by knockout, but he's a very uh, crafty dude. I'd like to see him again just as a um, uh, off topic uh, idea, but he wound up uh, losing a unanimous decision to him. Um, lost the split decision to Mateo Hande, but then went on a nice winning streak, um, starting with Mario Rodriguez, the man who had uh, initially knocked out Inkosnati Joyi, defeated Rodriguez by unanimous decision in spite of being dropped in that fight. And, you know, it was a close fight, but he eventually wound up uh, trying to unify against Francisco Chiras Rodriguez Jr. And uh, Chiros Rodriguez managed to uh, drop him, but he got up and he gave him hell. And that wound up being, uh, in my opinion, the fight of the year for 2014. It was just an all-action bout. And the 12th round was like something absolutely special with the two of them just throwing caution to the wind and doing everything to try and hurt each other in that final round to, to try and uh, pull something off. But Rodriguez wound up winning the unanimous decision there. Um, of course, he wound up moving up in weight, and Takayama wound up fighting Go Odaira for the vacant WBO and IBF titles. TKO'd Go Odaira in seven, but eventually lost that in a technical decision, uh, a technical split decision, lost to Jose Argumedo, who is still the IBF uh, champion at 105 pounds. But now, of course, he managed to uh, get back on the title scene, defeated the young upstart Rico Cano. And um, he's now a world champion again. You know, it's going to be really interesting to see who he happens to fight next. Um, it, would be, it would have been interesting to see him fight um, Kose Tanaka, who was actually the guy that wound up vacating the belt. But Tanaka wound up moving up. He was having some trouble making uh, 105. He's a bit of a big guy for the weight class. Um, but Takayama definitely has some solid opposition out there for himself. Uh, the WBO rankings aren't necessarily the, the greatest of the rankings, but there are a couple guys in there that I think would give uh, Takayama a hell of a fight, a really good fight. Uh, I think um, in particular, Carlos Buitrago would give him a very, very good fight. He was a guy that I thought actually defeated C knockout CP Freshmart, the WBA champion, the first time they fought. CP Freshmart was able to um, cleanly beat him in the second fight, however, the rematch. And then Ray Loreto, who is uh, the, uh, the other guy I mentioned earlier who had knocked out um, Inkosanati Joyi, who was uh, you know, one of the best uh, strawweight champions, I'd say, of the last um, 10 years or so. And uh, just the fact that Ray Loretto has managed to pull off that win and a couple other really solid, solid wins recently. He actually just had a TKO um, yesterday if, or the day before, if I remember correctly. And um, he's, he's, he's uh, a vet. He has one of these upside down records like an Orlando Salido where he lost, he had a bunch of losses early in his career. He's a guy that started when he was a teenager and all that stuff. But he's managed to um, pull off uh, some, some crafty veteran stuff. And he's actually only, in, I think, like 25 too. But he's, um, he's one of those guys that's learned on the job. He can crack and he can go to war. And I think that him and, um, and, and Takayama would be just all out warfare. With Bui Trago, he's a bit more of a stylist. Um, that'd be a bit of a bit of a, a technical uh, fight, uh, technical difficulties with regard to what Takayama would face against him. I mean, otherwise, there's also uh, potential unifications that are always out there at straw weight at 105 pounds, especially what would be an excellent rematch between himself and Jose Algormedo, because um, as I already mentioned, Takayama is very, very open to unifying belts. You know, he was uh, he unified. Uh, against Go Odaira, he unified against Francisco Rodriguez, and I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted to get try to get revenge on Jose Argomedo for Argomedo beating him the first time, unify the WBO and the IBF titles. And uh, I mean, he even tried to, to unify with Hecky Butler. There was a lot of talks about him potentially fighting Hecky Butler uh, back when he was the WBA super champion, you know, back when they had the super championship status, when Butler was ostensibly the WBA champion. So he's a guy that's willing to unify, which is great to see. You always like to root for guys that are willing to try and make it clean and clear in terms of, you know, who the man of the division is. And I think him and Argomedo running it back would be an excellent fight. 
it would crown at least the number two, if not the number one guy in the division, because it's pretty arguable about who is the true number one um, between Argumedo, Minayotin, and Freshman especially. Um, but I do know that Argumedo is going to have a mandatory coming up for the IBF, Jose Jimenez, who managed to beat uh, Zhang Chao Zhong uh, in, a few months back. And um, I mean, Jimenez is definitely uh, no easy out. I do favor Argumedo in that fight, however. I think Jimenez is a little bit too much of a finesse fighter. I'm not sure if he'll be able to handle the overall uh, pressure and strength of a, a fighter like Argumedo. Um, but I think a rematch between Takeyama and Argumedo would be a great, great fight. The first fight was, you know, a, a technical, uh, fast-paced chess match with um, some good, uh, solid punches landed on both sides. And I think a rematch would be just the same, if not um, potential unifications with either Nakatsuki Freshman Freshman or Wenhang Minayote. But I really uh, enjoyed this fight between Takeyama and Kano, in spite of the fact that, you know, it was only six rounds, but at the same time, um, you know, sometimes an, an abbreviated fight isn't necessarily the uh, the worst thing, and he definitely was in control of the fight. So I didn't seem like too much of a um, too much of a a bad thing, just by, or not too much of a bad thing, but too much of a, a uh, oh, I'm forgetting the word now. But I think you guys understand what I'm trying to get at. Um, basically, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if Kano was able, going to be able to um, pull off something crazy and uh, be able to either catch up on the scorecards or potentially knock uh, Takayama out. He's a very, very, very durable guy, as I've mentioned before. You know, he's, he's, like, he's not easy to dissuade. You know, even when he's been dropped, he's never been stopped like that. So, um, Just a solid job for Takayama. I do hope that Rico Kano recovers from this loss, which I'm sure he will. You know, he already had one loss on his record already. And then this loss is to a, one of the top veterans at 105 pounds. You know, probably going to be going down as one of the all-time greats at this weight class when it's all said and done, just by virtue of what he's managed to pull off in spite of his losses. You know, he keeps coming back, keeps on winning, um, and shows a lot of perseverance in the in the face of uh, just obstacles getting in his way. So, uh, much props to Takayama becoming a six-time champion having every belt that you can have at 105 pounds and i mean uh you know a lot of good a lot of luck for riku kano in the future should they happen to rematch because you know it was a it was a pretty solid fight overall and um he's definitely a guy to look out for in the future in terms of uh championship level fighters at 105 108 pounds and so on so that's going to be it for me on this one guys catch you on the next one peace